Hey everybody, this is Craig with Out on Film, and I am uh, beyond thrilled to have in conversation with me today the winner of Out on Film Screenplay Competition for Best Short Narrative, Jasmine Prophet. Jasmine, one, congratulations, and Thank welcome you. to Out on Film. Thank you. It's great to be here. Um, so, Jasmine, the name of your screenplay is Leo Let's It Rain. Mm -hmm. uh, which I will just say as uh, uh, just title alone grabbed me. <laughs> That's good. Okay. Um, so tell us a little bit of, you know, the inspiration for this screenplay that you wrote. Okay. So um, I have ADHD at the time that I initially wrote the very first version of this story. I didn't know that. Um, so <laughs> the character doesn't really know it either. <laughs> um originally it was just uh like a short story ish like it was just the narration and what happened was like I was in a class we had to write um a sh like something any piece of writing based on like a few paintings that the professor brought in and I forgot to do it until the day of class so we were going around like sharing our stories and I was last so I had seven people to best out a story about um, some guy who forgot his umbrella because that's what there was one of the painting <laughs> options of. So I was like, ah, uh, <laughs> Leo forgot his umbrella. <laughs> all the time. And it's just like, when you read it, it sounds like, oh my God, Leo forgot his umbrella. But no, it's just been like, like coming up with stuff on the spot, <laughs> which ironically is very ADHD of me as well. Um, <laughs> then I was diagnosed like a month later and I was like, you know what, I'm going to turn this into like a proper story um, in a script because I like screenwriting. So that was the inspiration, but it was just, it was me being very desperate. <laughs> <laughs> so, you, you know, in class and umbrella serves as, as the inspiration. So as yeah. you kind of develop this into a screenplay, kind of tell us a little bit about your process. Yeah. So um, it's different from, I think, most stories because it doesn't have like a ton of dialogue or anything like that. Um, so... I, I guess I was just like trying to turn it into a visual medium. And honestly, the more I was like writing in scenes, the more I got to tweak the dialogue that I had already had from when it was just a creative piece. Um, and I got to like deepen the relationships and think more about honestly the setting because like Leo, after he breaks up with his girlfriend, spoiler alert, becomes someone who's like always in a rush to get places right. and is really stressed out about that. Um, and I don't know, I, I lived in New York for a bit. Um, so it just felt like like his vibe kind of matched the city in some ways. And then I wanted there to be bits where like, especially towards the end when he's like starting to realize, you know, like how what he's been doing isn't sustainable. But yeah, like you can slow down and like right. the city can also slow down and you can appreciate your surroundings and just take a minute um, and like not feel like you always need to be doing something in order to be better or improve yourself or anything like that um so yeah it just it honestly ended up making more sense as a as a script because I got the visual support and it is you read it it is very visual I mean yeah, thank you. you can see Leo running around the city I mean it is a very visual uh mm -hmm. script and and I would say just the narration so tell us a little bit about how you uh you know your sense of language and rhythm because there is a real rhythm to the yeah. narration um, so tell us a little bit about how you approach you know dialogue and language and and, yeah. and, and this narration um so when I was in high school I uh used to participate in this thing called poetry out loud okay I don't know if anyone's heard of that but basically what they do is like you are encouraged to like memorize progressively more um poems and you get graded based on or like you get scored based on um how you deliver them and like what skills you use to like say it or whatever so I think I I started gravitating more towards like how um slam poets tend to deliver things and so as I was writing this dialogue and even as I was rushing to get it done I guess like it just it felt natural to like have it fit this sort of cadence and then when I had the finished screenplay, honestly, I like I feel like if it were to be get produced, which I'm trying to work on, um, 
the score would be a really big part of it. And so I wanted the narration to almost function as lyrics in a way, which is not to say that it should be sung, but that like, right. the, the, like it would be an auditory experience where the music would be coupled with the lines. Oh, so excellent. I came from, yeah. Yeah, excellent. Um, so tell us a little bit uh, about you. You are a student. Yes. yes. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about kind of what you're doing. Okay. And where, um, you're, and, and where you come from. That, that we want to know, as Jasmine comes on the scene, <laughs> tell us a little bit about you. Um. So uh, I'm 21 years old. I'm a senior at NYU, actually, which is why I live in New York right now. Um, so I'm in my last year and I'm double majoring in social and cultural analysis and dramatic writing. So I'm probably going to try to become a screenwriter. Um, that's the goal after graduating. Okay. So, um, yeah, that's, I guess that's my background. That's where I live. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I, I'm always curious. I am, you know, like a hundred years older than you are. Um, and, you know, okay. and we, you know, and we have been, doing a film festival and, and feeling it is vital to the community to be represented and to oh. be seen and to be heard. So, you know, from your perspective, 21 years old and, you know, graduating and getting into this field, tell us a little bit about what the representation and, and your voice means to you. Okay. Um... So I, I think a joke that I make probably too often is that like as a social and cultural analysis major, my goal is to make propaganda. Um, not literally, but <laughs> I, I, I think a lot of what I write tends to be either politically charged in that like, I'll work really hard to make sure that like my cast is really diverse or like I'll at least weigh in on like some way that like, you know, they, they face um, oppression and like just what the day-to-day -day experience of that is. So I think one of the things that I love about this script, especially about as a non-binary person, is that the main character is a trans man. And obviously trans people are remarkably underrepresented in media. And um, trans men, I think sometimes- In particular. Even, yeah, yeah. In particular. Not yeah. to say that like trans women are doing so great and that they're not oppressed. Right. But they right. have clothes and there are a lot of trans um, women who are doing really well in Hollywood, like Laverne Cox and the cast mm -hmm. of so many wonderful women out there. But I think, I don't know, at least when you Google it, I think the only like really successful trans man right now is this one guy in a show where he plays like a, either a police officer or a firefighter. I'm forgetting the name right now, but there aren't like a ton of examples of like right. trans male act actors in Hollywood. Um, so the, honestly, that's one of the things that I'm worried about with uh, making this. Is I don't know how I'm going to like, it's a very I, like there aren't like I mean, I'm sure they exist, but like, I don't know yes. how easy to find trans men to play the character but um that is something that i had in mind when i was writing it so okay basically. because it is one of the things that that we realized that you know the trans masculine experience is very underrepresented yeah um you know uh you know and it's one of the things that you know we've been kind of trying to support you know mm -hmm. trans narratives altogether but particularly absent are trans masculine yeah um, experiences and so one i'm glad that you did that Thank um, you. um and it's and it's you know but but it is that, that you focused on that because it is important yeah that, uh, you know that there is a segment of our population um our community that is not as represented as other right aspects of that and also still making that story like not necessarily about their transition and, like, right I some things also still couple the male experience, like Leo not being in touch with his emotions that much. Yeah. Going through other ways of like male conditioning, but still it's like, this is not, this is not a transition story. He's not going to get top surgery. We're not going to, you know. Right, right. That. I, and that's, and I think that's one of the things is, is we were reading it. I kind of really appreciate it because, um, you know, as, as I've, I've said for a long time, there will always be a coming out story. There will always be a story about transition, but there is, life beyond coming after coming out and there is life yeah. after transition or during and in all of our complexity and humanity and so it's nice to see you know that there are stories that are just about how we live and it feels as a cisgender man a very male thing just to run around the city without your umbrella in the rain we, <laughs> i mean <laughs> i yeah. so was like of course you did <laughs> yeah <laughs> 
That's really funny. <laughs> so who knew a, 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 an umbrella is the one thing that will connect us or the forgetting yeah. of an umbrella? <laughs> Getting soaked, uh, yeah. So tell us kind of what, what, how are you, what are the, the, the plans as, as you're kind of starting to think about this? Uh, one of the things that we are hoping is that you do uh, provide, get the opportunity to get this screenplay made into a short film. Yeah, that would be great. Um, my, what is my plan? I entered this script into a number of competitions. So my fingers crossed that like, it'll do well and I'll get funding that way. Um, Cause like, I don't know, people here have tried crowdfunding, but I'm like, I don't yeah. know. If I crowdfunding. Yeah, but um, no, I, I, I already like tapped a few uh, peers at NYU to help me produce okay. it. So we have a shooting schedule. We're like planning on doing it in May. And then by then I'll have heard back from all those other competitions. Okay. Um, so I'm feeling a little optimistic, but I would be a first time yeah. director. So there is also okay. some anxiety there. But, yeah. <laughs> Excellent, excellent. So Jasmine, I do just want to say congratulations to you from all of us at Out on Film. We are thrilled to have you as the winner of our screenplay competition for the short feature. I think that yours is a very exciting voice um, that I hope that we get to hear a lot more of. Thank you. That's so kind. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you. And everybody, we are going to be uh, having a reading of Jasmine's script uh, Saturday at Outfront Theater at one o'clock. So please come by and hear this really lovely screenplay read um, with our actors um, who are in our local community. Okay. Right. Bye, everyone. So, Bye. Jasmine, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. All right. And thank you, everybody, for listening to uh, our conversation with Jasmine Prophet here at Out on Film. And I hope uh, that you stay with us through the weekend with the re remainder of the festival and our streaming. And as always, from everybody here at Out on Film, please, let's all remain just absolutely defiantly queer. <laughs>